Hey Gratitude Seeker, today we will explore how it is and what it means to rely on others. Sometimes we just can't face challenges alone and the help that we get from other people is priceless. Like I mentioned before, my natural tendency is to be independent. And on some level, I actually pride myself in how independent I am and how able I am to solve all of my issues, all of my uh, shortcomings by myself. Without needing the help of others, without being needy, I have improved this part of myself like getting to be more balanced when it com- when it came to being independent and uh, actually asking for help. But to be honest, I still uh, have the tendency to be more independent than I should sometimes. But the beautiful part about relying on other people and asking for help is the fact that it gets us to feel gratitude. We all have limitations, we all have shortcomings and the beautiful part is that there are other people that might actually excel in that part of uh, life or in a particular domain in which you have shortcomings or it might actually be in the same field that you are in but they just have more experience. For instance, I had a situation a few weeks ago in which I had to do something new for a client. I don't know if you know this by now but uh, my work is creating personalized websites. So if you want one or you need one you can reach out at hello at georgianbenta.com and I can help you out. But what what I wanted to share is that um, that particular client wanted to redesign his website. He was working with an older platform and uh, he wanted to migrate to WordPress and also to redesign his website. And it was the first time that I had to do this. I liked the challenge but at some point I've hit the roadblock and I searched for the solution quite a while and I did all kinds of experiments so I can uh, find the solution and see what works but I just couldn't find it. So I asked for help. I have a friend that's a developer, a web developer, a very experienced one. He had done this several times and in just a few minutes the problem was solved. And I wanted to give you this example because we tend to do this in our life in general. We have some problems and we are either too prideful or we just don't feel secure to ask for help or I don't know what reasons we have for not asking for help, but we dwell on those problems, we get stressed out or we suffer a lot because of those problems instead of just asking for help. And at times this can happen in in the same area of expertise that you have. For instance, even though I know many things that are related to emotional intelligence, gratitude, self-development, different kinds of therapy techniques like Tata Healing or EFT. I'm still working with therapists and coaches to help me see some things that I just can't see and help me in situations that I just can't find a solution all by myself. And this is really something beautiful that we can help each other out in so many ways And we get to be so much stronger and so much wiser together. And one tip that I have for you when it comes to relying on others, whether we are talking about friends or therapists or coaches, is to have more than one and to be detached from uh, expecting help from a particular person. They have their own lives, their own problems and we can't expect them to be there all the time when we need them but we can create a circle of people that we can rely on if one friend doesn't answer when we call them and we need we need their help we can always call another and i think somehow 
it works out for the best. I think one of the wounds that people usually have when it comes to relying, relying on others is the fact that they rely on a particular person too much and uh, when they're not there or they're not available when, when they are needed, our tendency is to protect ourselves and to create some kind of protective layer for that thing not to happen in the future. But I think the best way to go about it is, like I said, to have several people that we can rely on. And yeah, it might be the situation that none of them are available. But usually that doesn't happen. And in my experience, this goes really well in business also. Because if you have only one source of income, you depend 100% on that source of income and that means that you might need to do some compromises that you really don't want to do because that's your only option or if that source of income no longer exists your brain might see it as a threat on your survival and this can lead to a lot of fear and anxiety but on the other side if you have several pillars it's easier for you to make decisions based on what brings you joy what brings you happiness and gratitude instead of just fear all right so this is it for this episode i really hope that you enjoyed it to be honest it wasn't very easy for me to be so honest and so vulnerable about my own limitations but i hope that my example will help you become more courageous and more vulnerable so that you can seek the help that you need to actually be happier live more fully and uh, enjoy more gratitude we get to enjoy a lot of gratitude when people help us with things that we thought were impossible to solve and when they are there for us when it's really hard for us to see any solutions i hope that somehow i was that person for you today and that this episode and this podcast is a helping hand for you whenever you need it Thanks a lot for listening. I really appreciate it when you share these episodes, when, whenever you feel that there is that person in your life that would enjoy great benefits from listening to the episode. If you want a website, let me know at hello at georgianbenta.com. And like always, don't forget to keep seeking gratitude.